Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out the worldwide interwebs, find out all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring back here for a little segment we like to call "What the Night. F- wrong with you?" And um, we're back in our, uh, our 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 pandemic. Do I not even have the intro shot up? I don't. I'm, I'm just gonna I'm, I'm, I'll put that on again because I'm Night. up. And I, I Take two. Up. It's been all night, man. It's been all night. There we go. Got the intro thingy in the background. All right. So uh, let's let's start off this week with more tales from the pandemic hellscape. Um, hand sanitizer has become this thing. Now, we initially we didn't realize that this this thing didn't spread so much by touch, but by this point, it's impossible to to get people to undo their brain on that one. So, so hand sanitizer is now like a giant goddamn thing. Every cosmetic company has started making hand sanitizer. Mm. And I, I guess they were my, my only way of thinking here is were they running out of containers? Because now this has happened and somebody probably thought they were being really sorry. Right. Little side note, little, 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 my anecdote time. Once upon a time, there was a little uh, guitar company called Dan Electro. And they were very cheap, and they were trying to make a big order of guitars for Sears. To those of you who are very small, Sears used to be something called a department store. Yeah. Um, a department store used to be where you used to go and purchase things when we had what was known as an economy. It was kind but of a, like a fancier Target. Yeah. Um, Dan well, Electro. So much. <laughs> Dan, Dan Electro. Big order. Had to rush them out. But they, they had these guitar pickups, little microphones for your electric guitar, but they needed a way to shield them to keep them from being noisy. Well, the guy at Dan Electro said, hey, I got a hold of this load of lipstick tubes. What if we just take the guitar pickups, tape them up, drop them in the lip, lipstick tube, seal it up, and it won't be as noisy because they're made of metal. So they're like, Okay, and they did it. And that's how you got Dan Electro lipstick tube pickups. And that's very awesome. It's very cool for vintage, you know, stuff you pick up that way. It was innovative. It was outside of the box. It was reusing something. So I think maybe they tried to do that. However, they did it the bad way. FDA, please don't drink handheld hand sanitizer, even if it's sold in a beer can. That doesn't even make sense. You can't reseal it. Food and Drug Administration on Thursdays issued a warning to consumers about hand sanitizers that are flavored and packaged in food and drink containers, which increases the risk of people accidentally drinking them, particularly children. According to the warning, the agency has found sanitizers with flavorings such as chocolate and raspberry. Why would you flavor it? Do they not mean fragrance? Well, it, it's to say they do this. Um, it makes it smell a certain way, but it's cheaper to just use candy flavor. The same stuff. I mean, they use that for my e-liquid or why I used to use my e-cigarette. They use that for e-liquid stuff. They use candy flavor. Which it's you know it's non toxic yeah, it won't that's hurt you. It's supposed to go in your mouth, right? Yes, it's it's you get the smell, but it's cheaper. However, you also get the flavor. The problem here, and packaging including beer cans, water bottles, juice bottles, vodka bottles, and children's snack pouches, some of which were marketed with cartoons aimed at children. This isn't just like one company. This this is this is uh why? Like at what pitch meeting? You're like, okay, but hear me out. Hand sanitizer, but it looks like food. Yeah. Like that's not a cake that looks like not a cake, <laughs> which is clever. It's poison that looks like not poison. Lupin says it's finger licking clean. No. Nope. Uh, and people are like, well, this trace bad. Do you know that for a long time, which is why this is, this is why it's even more baffling. Um, 
hand sanitizer contains alcohol and that a lot of times alcoholics and uh, will drink hand sanitizer yes or like mouthwash which is typically why you're not supposed to fl- to to be doing the flavoring on the hand sanitizer because it goes down smooth you don't want to encourage people to ingest things that they're not supposed to ingest generally we try to avoid that i realize the supply chains are all fucked up i realize they're trying to, to the, we have to get this product out to the people how do we do that yeah okay I don't but, understand the beer can one though, because seriously, you can't reclose it. Yeah, that's like that's a whole bunch of that's a lot like, of are hand sanitizer. You sanit- use twelve ounces of hand sanitizer at once. What are you doing? Uh What activity requires that? You can't use it as lube. Cheaper than showering. It's quicker. I guess if you want to like. Can you shower with hand sanitizer, but don't. And this is on top of of the fact that there were were companies, a bunch of uh, companies, were rushing hand sanitizer to the pro to to uh, to market, and they were using uh, methanol. Yeah, which is is there are a couple of different kind of alcohol re- variants. Methanol is the one that makes you blind and dead, and even if you don't drink it, you just put it on your hands you absorb it through the skin so like good news you don't have the rona right bad news you're blind and dead yeah yeah i mean it is 2020 i'm trying to like well is that bad news i mean i mean so Next up, you have had to see that picture of Adele with Bantu knots. What the hell? She was, you know, she was coming back. She was strong. It was like, cool, Adele. <laughs> she's, she's, what the fuck have you done, lady? And I think oh, she honey, knew, no. like, she looked like she was being held hostage. Like, <sighs> you did the bad thing. Um, I thought it was Katy Perry the first time I saw that picture, and that seemed like some Katy Perry shit. <laughs> it did, didn't it? That made sense. And then they were like, no, that's Adele. And I was like, no, no, it, no, no, it's not. What? No. What? No. She's not dumb. Apparently. All right. My levels are a little off here. I'm just messing with the. Thinking of a song to the tune of my Sharona. Do you know the internet actually asked Weird Al to do my Corona? And he said no. Because obviously. Right. Weird Al was like, no, I am not going to do that. What's wrong with you people? Stop it. I'm not going to do the fucking pandemic polka. So it is, of course, the end times, the end of days. We're we living through the apocalypse. And, and really, we should be at nothing surprises you anymore. We should be. And then, and then something surprises you. Airline pilots reported seeing a guy in a jetpack flying 3,000 feet over Los Angeles. All right, somebody tell Robert Downey Jr. Iron Man died. (laughs) Two pilots on two different flights reported seeing a man in a jetpack thousands of feet in the air above Los Angeles on Sunday, prompting an investigation by authorities. An American Airlines pilot was approached uh, was approaching Los Angeles International Airport at 6.30 p.m. when he called in the sighting to air traffic control. Um, Tower American 1997. We just passed the guy in a jetpack. <laughs> Another pilot on Southwestern flight, uh, according to uh, NBC Los Angeles, also reported seeing the individual in a jetpack and the air traffic controllers radioed to another airline crew to warn them. Two airline freight crew, yeah, around 6.30. Now, Everybody's all going, th- th- there are a couple of things that could have happened. Okay. First, a couple of pilots could have gotten together and conspired to, to make a joke. To make a funny and waste everybody's fucking time. Unlikely, but we have seen stupider shit. So that's yeah. one thing. The other is some son of a bitch has built a homemade jetpack. And is zooming through LAX airspace. Now look, if you're going to make easier ways to commit suicide, 
Right. You could have driven out to like Salt Lake Flats or some bullshit yeah. where there, there's like no goddamn anybody and flown and tested your, your jetpack thing and done a YouTube video. It would have been awesome. You don't do it in LAX. No, that's rude. It's not just rude. It's it, also they, you should probably bleep that Tony Stark thing I said when you put this on YouTube. Otherwise, there's going to be four thousand comments about. Am I a spoiler? <laughs> just saying. <sighs> but you don't do that near the airport. I don't. That's I don't. real dumb. You're going to die. I mean, he's the cocketeer. And you're not Iron Man or you're, the Mandalorian. No, no, you're not. I mean, it's, it's, look, airplane, very, very big, very big, big jets, big, big whoosh. I'm trying to be on your level here, my, my dude. Big jet. Oh, no, big. You, very small. Big jet engine, hungry. L little jets. Zzz, big jet. Boo. Little jet. Zzz, smash! Big jet engine, turn you into confetti. Like, and then the jet says fuck it and falls down and everybody's on fire and you're, you're in pieces and on fire. And then nobody's happy. I mean, why? I, you're trying... Why would you? I was about to say you're trying. I get it. You're trying to get publicity, but no, because yeah. like I said, go out the fucking desert, get someone with like a GoPro or like a fucking drone or some shit, and take video of your ass flying, and put that shit on YouTube. There's your publicity. It doesn't even cost. It costs you like nothing. That's like three hundred bucks. Yeah, with the GoPro and the drone. What are you? And you're not a giant hazard. Because I don't know if you've noticed, good sir, but <laughs> air travel sucks even more now than it used to. Oh, and yeah. It used to suck a lot. Now it sucks more. Yeah. The, the, so if your fucking flight gets canceled because of some fucking Mandalorian wannabe <laughs> asshole. Yeah, uh, we have to turn around and return to the uh, the gate. So uh, we'll need you to take your seats, and you need to do a new flight. And uh, that's about the point somebody's running over to the emergency exit with, with like a blunt instrument, ready to jump out and attack you mid air. Yeah, someone will snap because you tell them there's a jetpack outside. They will fucking snap on you. Make that William Shatner shit look like you know fucking nothing. <laughs> They will, they will launch the emergency slide and air surf over to your ass and jam an emergency flare up your nose. People are under a lot of stress lately. A little bit. <laughs> Maybe don't push it. Uh, so next up, you haven't seen Office Space yet. Office Space, yeah. Oh, you've seen, okay. Yeah, so you, you know the whole bit with the, uh, with the take a penny and round it down, and then we get all the money, and... What, like Superman 3? Yeah. Um, that at least, they kind of, they fucked it up, but they kind of had a plan there to cover their ass. Yeah. I don't understand how this... <sighs> Elkview women altered $100 cashier's check to 8 Point four million. Kanawha County woman has been indicted by a federal grand jury in connection with an alleged elaborate frauds. Elaborate? Holly uh, Yerla, also known as Holly Erla. Anderson. What? Erla? Erlas? It's Erlas. Yeah. Also known as Holly Anderson. Is charged with bank fraud, mail fraud, forging the signature of a judge. Two counts of ag aggravated identity theft. Um, according to the indictment, Erla's altered a $100 cashier check to reflect an amount over $8.4 million. The indictment also alleges that she provided fake documents with four signatures and a personal check for $1 million. Although she, knows she, she knew she did not have sufficient funds in her account. To an assurance company to obtain an annuity uh, contract. Earless check was returned for insufficient funds. 
How was this supposed to fucking work? Yeah. Look, especially with the cashier's checks, you can't just change the number. No. And get whatever you want. That's way not how that works at all. That, but if you're going to try, go smaller. That, don't help. Like, numbers like 8.4 million get a lot of attention. Numbers like 1,000 do not get a lot of attention. That's a very specific amount, too. Like, I, I just, I, how? Did she really think no one was going to check? Because look, yeah. when you cash a check, the money actually comes from somewhere. It comes from a bank account somewhere. That's what a check is. They did a whole episode of Perfect Strangers about this. Did you ever watch Perfect Strangers? I did, long ago. There's one where Balky Bartokamis gets a checking account, and he doesn't understand that checks aren't money. And so he buys them all new furniture. <laughs> doesn't understand how they work. And that was years and years ago. Look, a check, it's not. It's a one-time debit card is what it is. Yeah. And if there's not money in the account to cover it, you fucked. So when they tried to cash that, all right, well, take your 8.4. Yes, why? The key to this kind of grift is to keep it small enough that nobody's checking. After a certain number of zeros, they start checking. I love how you're helping, Tara. You're, you're helping. I'm just saying, don't be a fucking idiot. Like, <laughs> uh. Did you think you were going to go in the bank and hand that to them and they were going to give you a bag of money? With a money sign on it, no less. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's not even how that works. That's exactly how that works. All, all like, in individual I had to bills. Get a cashier's check from my bank when I bought my car and it took a week after I deposited money into my account to write them the cashier's check. Like it's a process. They don't they don't like just trusting you. We're supposed to just trust them, but they don't trust us. Nope. Um next up, this is uh one less reason to go to Taco Bell. Uh, as if you needed one. Or one more reason not you know, yeah, one Listen, more reason the not to go. Empanadas are legit. Yeah. Have okay, well, I, I let me uh let me counter that with um naked old dude. Naked Taco Bell fan nabbed in drive through Oklahoman 61 claimed all his clothes were in the wash. You know, laundry day. An Oklahoma man arrested Saturday night for going through a Taco Bell drive through naked told police that all his clothes were in the wash and he was unaware such mo nude motoring was illegal. Oh, so he was in a car. I don't think that's that unreasonable. I don't. <laughs> like, I wouldn't do it, but it's not the worst thing I've ever heard. According to investigators, well, wait for it. Chris for sale, 61, place an order through the drive through lane speaker at a Taco Bell about two miles from his Oklahoma City residence. When sales us, we subsequently pulled his 2021 Ford Ranger, so dude's rocking a late model car there, to the drive through window to pay for his order, a 41-year-old uh, female employee looked into his vehicle and immediately noticed he was completely naked. Despite sales nudity, the Taco Bell worker accepted payments from him and gave him his food, which, welcome to the bullshit if you have never worked a service job. Yeah. Welcome to the bullshit of a service job. I, even say, like, I would make note of that, but man, whatever. Even when an old dude with his dick out pulls up, you got a service with a smile. It is if hell. If you're not going to fucking bother me, just take your food and go. I don't have the time. Despite Sale's nudity, she gave him the food. However, the employee told police she believes Sale then thought to extend the encounter by asking for a, to add a taco to his already completed order. Worker told the cops that she had no desire to continue any contact. Asked another employee to complete, complete the contract. Okay, fuck you, lady. Just tell the, the second worker, a 26-year-old woman, provided Sale with the additional taco. 
She too told police she clearly and easily saw Sale's genitals from her perch in the drive-thru window. After receiving the extra taco, Sale still did not leave and asked for additional sauces. She then All of this pissing me off way more than him being naked. Sale then asked for an additional... I don't give a fuck if you're naked. Don't be a pain in my ass. Asked Taco Bell worker for more napkins. He then pulled away the pickup truck. But Sale immediately returned to the order speaker and asked for even more sauces. Both the female victors say they believe Sale wanted to continue the exposure incident. Cop concurred, right? And that Sale seemed to come to this restaurant naked with the intent of allowing himself to be seen completely naked in his general area. While being detained around 9 p.m., Sale claimed that I didn't know it was against the law to drive naked. Told Patrolman his clothes were all in the washer and he got hungry. On en route to the jail, Sale talked almost nonstop about how unfair the situation was. When? Fuck this guy! Fuck him! Well, apparently nobody will, and that's his problem. But that's a you problem. Seriously! Not a girl at the Taco Bell making $9 an hour problem. See, if it were me, and your dumbass pulls up to the window naked, and I'm working at the Taco Bell. I've got fire sauce right here. Yeah, I was going to say, wouldn't you just accidentally cut a couple of those sauces open? Oops. My oh friends. God, did that spill all over your dick? My friends. Maybe you shouldn't have had it out. One of the worst things you will ever do is for, go to the bathroom after having spicy food and forget to wash your hands before handling your equipment. I don't really eat spicy food. I'm super white, so that's not a problem I've ever had. Dan says the worst thing he ever did was use that Bronner's Castile soap in peppermint. On that area. And this is which the, I didn't know that would be a problem. I give people shit for this all the time. They're like, whatever, but spicy food is capsation. That is yeah. literally a plant's way of saying, oh my God, get this out of your mouth. Yeah. It is a fucking defense against you. And what do you do? You put more in your mouth. It's a fucking chemical weapon. I don't get it. Yeah. It's not for me. I'm a mild salsa. I don't even get sauces at Taco Bell. I eat those tacos fucking plain because that's the level of white that I am. Uh, just of all the places to go with your genitals out and ready, a place where someone could just squirt fire yeah, sauce. You know what? Taco Bell is basically like stoner Mecca. <laughs> so he probably figured nobody would even know or nobody would even bat an eye. Because Taco Bell long ago stopped being like wannabe Mexican food and became food for fucking stoners. Do you have absolutely nothing else to eat right now? Are you high as balls? Come you to Taco Bell. Baked out of your mind. We have a talking chihuahua. We have a talking chihuahua and a taco inside Doritos. Come have fucking food with us. <laughs> Every uh, time they introduce a new product, I'm like, their focus groups are 100 percent always just baked. stoned out of their the, mind. What? How else do you design these products? I have more stupid. Oh my god, this. I I This would have this pro, this could have potentially worked had they done this at maybe midnight and not 9 a.m. Oh my god, you know what the drive-thru lady should have said to the guy? Uh when he was like, Can I get an extra taco? She'd been like, I see you brought your own taquito. <laughs> Brazen thief drove car into Home Depot. We've I've got to see this. I've got to got we got we have to. Here we go. Cue up the music and da 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 are you trying to make a K-turn in the Home Depot? <laughs> nope. There's no um, room for that. 
Usually when someone tries to drive their car into a Home Depot for some thieving, they have the good sense to do it when the rent retailer is closed. Not Gwendolyn Braswell. 42-year-old Alabama woman, cops say, was behind the wheel of a Pontiac Sunfire that drove into a Home Depot Friday morning. Police identified Braswell as the suspect in the August 14th theft. Asked public to help find and determine her whereabouts. Update, she's been arrested on an assortment of charges. Well, what was she stealing? It looks like she's just driving around fucking shit up. Um, Cosplay's Braswell uh, had first staged merchandise in the store it, before returning. Yes, yeah, she's so she what she had done is she'd set stuff up. Okay, she'd set them up so she could just like grab it, throw it in the trunk, and fucking go. For backing into the store's front sliding doors, which were clipped by the Pontiac, Roswell navigated her way down an aisle, but not before plowing into a display and scattering customers. Investigators contacted, uh, connected Braswell to the Brazen Heist, thanks to witnesses who took down the license plate number and recorded video. Because that's on your car, and your name is attached to that, like, did you think nobody was going to notice? Like, what was the plan? Did you think nobody was going to notice that you drove your fucking car into the store? A leaf blower and a dehumidifier? Man, if you're going for the high dollar shit in the Home Depot, go get yourself a water heater. Maybe she just really needed a leaf blower and a dehumidifier, though. <laughs> I mean, where was this? Alabama? Um, It's fucking humid there. Yeah, it was Alabama. Maybe she just needed that shit. But this is not the way to do it. Because people are going to notice a car driving around the store. Even if people... And your license plates on your car. And, and that's really easy to track. Everyone has a fucking camera. Everyone. Everything. And even if everyone didn't, the store does. How did you think you'd just be like, I'll just, I'll, I'll be quick in and out. Nobody will ever know I, I was there. I the staging thing, though. Like... All my retail jobs, like one of your jobs was to look around because people would hide shit that they could steal later. <laughs> like Old Navy, you'd find like something stuffed where it didn't belong. And that's because somebody was planning to come back later with a bag and shove it in there. <laughs> but not to this level. No one ever drove a car through the Old Navy and just started scooping denim in. Like... It, it's not just the theft. It's the bad. You're so bad at it. Yeah. But you think they'd never find your ass? Like, at least don't use your own car. Use your ex-boyfriend's car. Because fuck that guy, right? <laughs> you, got, you always try to help them. Bless your heart. Like, steal your ex's car and then do this. Uh, Put on a baseball cap so you look like him. Uh, our last one tonight also comes from Alabama. And this one is terrible. Um, I, I, there's, there's no way. There's, there's no other way. Of, oh, my God. There are many things we are looking into in the attempt to cure cancer or treat cancer. Or, or make cancer stop. But y y you know, probably the one thing that is not going to play a role in ending cancer. Butt stuff. Essential oils. <laughs> Alabama man. <laughs> There's the look. There it is. There, there it is. Alabama man has been indicted for whipping up suppositories in kitchen sold them as cancer treatments. Alabama man has been indicted on multiple federal charges after authorities say he was making drugs in his kitchen and marketing them as cancer treatment. The drugs, according to the indictment, were homemade suppositories. I'm going to say two words you'd never want to hear. Homemade suppository. Artisanal still doesn't beat necrotic fat as my least two favorite words I've ever heard together. Artisanal suppository, handcrafted in an environment so unsterile 
that the customers reported finding pieces of hair. Like you have long hair. Have you ever gotten like a piece of hair stuck in your butt crack? And it's I, the worst thing ever. I don't, and if you're somewhere public when you notice it, it's just torture. I, I, I don't want to say. It's a long hair people problem. It happens. And it's the <laughs> worst. Imagine shoving the hair of a person you don't even know up your rectum. There are probably people who pay good money for that. But that's not what they were paying for here. No. What was in these things? Does it even say? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, we'll get there. Uh, let's see. Uh, Justin C. Fielder uh, charged Patrick Charles Bishop on charge related to his purchase, manufacture, and distribution of drug products that had never been reviewed or approved by the FDA, but he claimed were effective cancer treatments. Hooverman is charged with conspiracy, fraudulently in introducing adulterated drugs into interstate commerce, fraudulently introducing misbranded drugs into interstate commerce, and also charged with fraudulently obtaining pre-retail medical products, creating false documentation for the products, and knowingly possessing and, tra and trafficking in pre-retail media... My God. He's fucking lying. Charges uh, in the indictment center on Bishop's purchase, manufacture, labeling, marketing, sale, and distribution of a drug product purportedly containing a peptide known as PNC-27. PNC-27 has not been approved by the F FDA for use in the United States as a drug to treat any disease, including cancer. Nor has PNC-27 undergone clinical trials in the United States. Bishop obtained the peptide from GL Biochem, a manufacturer in China, he paid them more than $600,000 for the peptide products he received. According to the indictment, Bishop repeatedly assured the manufacturer he would use the peptide solely for laboratory research purposes. In fact, he and others used the peptide to make homemade suppositories in his kitchen in Birmingham and a warehouse he rented in Pelham. Facilities were not sterile, did not comply with current good manufacturing practices, Bishop and others marketed the PNC-27 drug alt products to alternative medicine doctors, cancer patients, and as an effect, others as effective treatment for cancer. You sold this to cancer patients to treat them. You sold this, you sold butt stuff to cancer patients in the hope it would save their lives. Untested butt stuff from China. Like, how is that not just experimenting on people? I mean, could do we? That's at the point where we need to take a long, critical look and ask: Do we need you? I mean, could we do without you? I mean, if it worked, this is the kind of year. Twenty twenty is the kind of year where we'll find out this fucker was right and it worked. I, big doubt. Big doubt. Probably not. Big doubt. Just, but yeah, you can't just fucking experiment on people. No! We had a whole big thing about that, like about, oh, 60, 70 years ago. Big trial. And I know that, like, Nazism has come back in vogue, unfortunately. But let's not. I mean, in general. Let's not. I mean, you can't just be sitting around and going, you know, maybe where people will go a little hard on Mangala. That's 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 not a thought you should be having. Oh, Ronan said he would have tested them on himself, but his head was already up his ass. Not wrong. I mean, depending on how much hair people found, his head is up a lot of people's asses. Bishop sold PNC-27 drug products to Hope for Cancer, a holistic cancer treatment center with clinics in Mexico. Oh, God. You... Motherfucker. There's no other word. There's no... All right, look. I don't believe in destiny. I don't believe in, in predetermination. But right now, you could convince me that the entire reason humanity combined the words mother and fucker <laughs> long ago 
was just for this guy. For this, it came to this you. You yeah. are the motherfucker. Only in theaters. To be honest, like, holistic cancer treatment already weirds me out. Like, uh, there are places that do it as part of a program, and I understand that because diet and exercise can help. Right. You know, there are, like, um, immune system boosting foods you can eat that will help you get through the chemo. I understand it as part of an approach. If fucking essential oils and kale cured cancer, we would know about it by now. Motherfuckers eating it enough. God knows why. It'd be interesting if we actually had a reason for it. I'm told it has like a lot of B vitamins. Yeah, I'm also told it tastes like shit. You know why? Because it tastes like shit. It does. It tastes objectively terrible. It's, it's... We found this shit in the ocean! Let's eat it! <laughs> no! That's hardly the worst place humans have found something and eaten it. Is this garbage you wash... In your fridge? It, it's quite... It, it's quite... Let's liter- squeeze this thing under the cow and drink what comes out. So, kale is quite literally trash that comes out of the ocean the ocean doesn't even want it anymore honey it's throwing it out it. yeah honey is just bee vomit there's coffee that costs extra because a certain type of wild cat has to eat the beans and shit them out it's an acidity thing it's stupid because you could probably do the same thing with actual Acids and it's in a way, cabinet. way more expensive than any regular coffee because apparently the process of the cat digesting and shitting it makes it better. As someone who scoops litter boxes every day, I don't think cat shit makes anything better. <laughs> so the, the the first thing we've learned this week is it's we will work, we will fight, and one day we will come up with a way to cure cancer, but not with butt stuff. I, I don't think I don't think that's gonna happen. I'm I don't. And if, if I'm wrong, I don't wanna know. Just, I don't. Um We have learned don't take your car to the heist. Take someone else's <laughs> car to the heist. That's why you have exits. <laughs> To frame them for crimes. <laughs> oh, I only wish some days. Anyway, um, <laughs> we have learned that uh, capsation is a chemical chemical weapon and should not be near your genitals. So don't go to Taco Bell naked. I don't believe we have to say this shit. We've learned that you can't just change the numbers on the check and make more money. No, it's not that one simple trick that doctors don't tell you about. It's 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 a fucking fraud is what you, it's fucking fraud. Um, I mean, the one simple trick doctors don't tell you about is also fraud. Yes, yeah, but also. it's a different kind. Um, we've learned that someone will have the ingenuity to create a jetpack and the utter sheer stupidity of flying it in 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 uh, airport airspace. It's like it, it, you're you're brilliant, and it comes right back around to you're a fucking idiot. Brilliant, fucking idiot. It's just it's a, it's it's a loop. Um, There's a lot of people that are like book smart, but it's like they they dumped all their character creation points into <laughs> intelligence and none into wisdom, wits, or wisdom. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. So like, there's no common sense there. Nope. They can do all the math in the fucking universe. But they don't know how to navigate a supermarket. And finally, we've learned this week, maybe, just maybe, don't put the sterilizing hand sanitizer in a beer can package. Don't you put it in your mouth. Don't you put it in your mouth. (laughs) Do you remember the little singing pills? You should have a healthy fear of us. Because pills look like candy. My sister, when we when she was a kid, ate a bunch of my mom's antacids and had to have her stomach pumped. Because those <laughs> look like Smarties. 
Why would she want to, after the first antacid, why would she be like, this tastes terrible and not stop? I don't know. She just ate a whole bunch of them and she had to go have her fucking stomach pumped before, like, I don't know what would happen to a child who eats way too many antacid, but they didn't want to find out. 